Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today what we're going to do is we're going to install a product called Flood Stop made by Watts to go on this hot water heater right here which is in my house. I'm a DIYer and uh, what happened was is that I saw this video of this person who has a hot water heater in his home and his hot water heater failed and it leaked all over the floor and it caused eight seven to eight thousand dollars worth of uh, damage water damage to the home before I guess he was able to shut it off and and um, clean up the mess and 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 stuff like that and, and uh, as far as I know it was pretty bad and he had to go through insurance and stuff like that and what this guy did which, which I thought was pretty ingenious because uh, uh, obviously we cannot live without hot water so he immediately you know got the damage fixed got a new hot water heater installed but he didn't want to go through the same uh, problem again with his water heater <clears throat> what it, so what he did was is he took a smoke detector that had the uh, push button to test and he took the smoke detector apart and where the leads were that connect to the smoke detector that you would normally push in to test he soldered two wires onto those uh, those two touch points on the smoke detector. He brought those two wires down his tank and at the bottom he taped them to the bottom underneath the tank about an inch or two apart. So when, so the, so that way if he if there was a water leak uh, in the bottom of the hot water heater it would make up the uh, connection between the two wires and the smoke detector that he installed right there at the hot water heater would go off. And I thought about that and I thought um, that's good but if he's not home that's really not good. Oh and another thing this person did which uh, I, I know the person was trying to be uh, thinking in their mind that they were doing the best thing possible. Uh, at the bottom of the hot water heater what they did was is they um, created it like the, uh, like a dam rather than like a, a tray. I think he built something so that it was more like four inches tall, which is good. Uh, and it had a nice big like three, two and a half inch possibly drain line that came out of there, at least two inch line that came out of there. But then he put it and it went through a spring loaded check valve because he tied it into his uh, sewer drainage system of the house and he didn't want the sewer gases to back up. Naturally, of course you don't want the sewer gases to back up. Here's the problem is that it was a spring-loaded check and that those require a little bit of pressure in order for the spring to check and all you've got there is gravity pressure before you reach the flood level rim of that overflow dam that he built before it would come over. I actually don't think that that was going to work for him. So I think the person had the absolute best intentions. He did not want seven to eight thousand dollars worth the damage to his house uh, moving forward with the next hot water heater and um, and they were doing you know and they posted it uh, uh, from uh, a, a good video and it actually created a me to think and do some research and think because because my hot water heater this one right here if you if you're the subscriber to my channel if you're not please subscribe to my channel you'll see plenty of videos of me working on this hot water heater the, uh, uh, this hot water heater was here when I purchased the home it was already installed I've been living in this home for about let's just say 10 years the hot water heater uh, was not dated now when I install a hot water heater I'm gonna put installed on and then the date but they didn't do it so but uh, judging by the uh, model and serial number I was determined I uh, was able to determine that uh, this was installed somewhere between 2002 and 2004 okay now this is 2019. That means that at, at a best case scenario, this hot water heater is approximately 15 years old. It comes with a nine year warranty, okay? With a nine year warranty and it's 15 years old, I'm six years out of warranty on this hot water heater. So the, this hot water heater is, is on me. Uh, and I don't wanna just take this hot water heater and just replace it uh, just because it's beyond the um, life expectancy of the warranty. I want to get the absolute full life expectancy out of this hot water heater. But at the same point in time, I want to protect myself. I don't want seven to eight thousand dollars worth of damage. Now a couple good things I got going for me. Number one, I'm in the garage. The hot water heater is in the garage. If it's going to leak, it's 
it's probably going to leak out out of the garage not cause seven eight thousand dollars worth of damage but guess what i don't want any damage i actually don't want no inconvenience whatsoever so i came across this um uh, this device by doing research on the internet and this one here is is is, is called uh, watts it's a water detector shut off and there's the, uh, the model number right there hopefully you can see that and I got this for two hundred dollars off of Amazon we'll do an unboxing I'll show you everything that's inside and it came with Amazon Prime so of course I can return it if something didn't work out um, now what I tried to do is I tried to get the instructions so to, to verify that everything was going to work as, as well as possible before I uh, uh, purchased it but I could not uh, find the instructions online so I just ordered the, uh, the, the box with the insurance of having it through Amazon Prime if I needed to return it. My intention is not to return it. My intention is to install it. That's what this whole video for is today, to, to show you start to finish how to install one of these. If I can do it, you can do it. By the way, part, uh, the whole emphasis of Ken Training is to not just produce a video. It's to produce a video and to give you the education that you need so that you can tackle this same job or a similar job on your own. Um, and that's what this video and what my channel is all about. Um, I'm trying to reach out to people who aren't professionals. I'm not a professional plumber, okay? I'm a DIYer doing something that I think is uh, I think this is an excellent tool for 200 bucks uh, and by the way we're gonna do some testing I'm gonna show you all the testing that I'm gonna do with this with this device but for 200 bucks I could potentially save myself the headache of a of a water damage catastrophe from a leak now normally in the olden days when water heaters would leak they would just kind of trickle out, leak, create a puddle, and the homeowner would catch it, uh, depending upon where the hot water heater is. I mean, um, where my hot water heater is, I park my car right here, I look at that thing every day, I'd catch it, you know, immediately. Um, so it wouldn't be a big deal. But some people, the hot water heater is kind of out of the way and stuff like that. So for those people, uh, uh, and I, I just think this is a wonderful tool. What about if I'm not home? What about if I'm on vacation? Anything. I just want full protection. Oh, and by the way, this particular device is not just a device to shut the water off to the hot water heater when it reaches, um, when the water sensor is activated. This device shuts off the water and the fuel source to the water heater, which is which is unbelievably good. If you just simply had uh, a water sensing pad and you shut off the water and the thermostat on the hot water and the water heater thought that um, the water temperature was too low so it activated, you would still be firing your water heater. In my case, it's a natural gas water heater. This shuts off the fuel source to the water heater when water is activated by the sensor. That's That's a critically important for the proper protection so you want to make sure uh, if you're going to uh, tackle this number one thing that you need to do is you need to determine what is the fuel source of your water heater is it natural gas is it oil is it electricity whatever it is you have to make sure you purchase the compatible uh, uh, flood safe uh, that's what they call it here in the paperwork you see there flood safe so and this is by Watts which is a major manufacturer of plumbing products okay uh, Watts right there so they, they should have plenty of products uh, and they and they sell every single type of configuration that you can think of now in my case it's a natural gas so I had to get the the one that was for natural gas now when you look at the packaging let me show you the packaging here hold on okay so here's the box and this is the packaging that's on it so it tells you that it's a watts three-quarter inch lfwds-sp-r 
water detector, water and power shutoff, standing pilot, which is what I have. I have a standing pilot with, with right hand thread. Now that confused me. The right hand thread portion confused me when I first read that. When I first read that and it said right hand thread, I thought what they were talking about was the, uh, the valve itself. And I thought possibly they were saying that the valve may be uh, right hand threaded. So here's, here's the valve itself. This is the, uh, uh, the ball valve that's going to open and close depending upon uh, how, how we, um, uh, whether it's uh, in the uh, open position or the closed position. We'll do full testing here. Right now it's being shipped. It's shipped in the closed position. The disc is closed, okay? The, uh, the ball is closed. But I thought possibly when I read that right-hand thread that they were talking about this. Turns out that they weren't talking about this. What they were talking about is this. This here is for the standing pilot, okay? Now, on, uh, the standing pilot on a gas appliance uses a, a, a component called the thermocouple. The thermocouple sends a millivolt signal to the natural gas valve, telling the valve that the pilot is activated and it is okay to open the gas valve with a call for heat, meaning the thermostat setting is set and it's and the water is below the temperature of the thermostat setting. Uh, then the natural gas valve will, uh, 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 the, the, the thermocouple will allow the natural gas valve to pull in and open, allowing the natural gas to uh, turn on fully, valve fully, so that way you're, you get full flame, not just a pilot flame. And that is, the, that is the purpose of the thermocouple. Now it turns out that most thermocouples are, are screwed in what they call right hand thread. Well what is right hand thread, Ken? Right hand thread is a standard thread pattern found on just about everything that you screw in. And, the, and, and mine is right hand thread. I'll show you how I tested it and how you can determine this on your own in case, you, in case yours is not right hand thread and it's left hand thread. Because some natural gas valve manufacturers produce the thermocouple uh, connection with a left hand thread rather than a right hand thread. Majority is right hand thread. Mine is right hand thread. So thank goodness I don't need to return the product. I actually ordered the right product. And at the, and at the time, I didn't even know what right hand thread meant. I thought they were talking about something completely different. I thought they were talking about this, <laughs> uh, but they weren't. They were talking about this, which is the thermocouple connection. And this is the beautiful thing about this flood safe is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the thermocouple going to the natural gas valve, plug this in its place, then plug the existing thermocouple into here. So you're, you're interrupting the thermocouple signal through this device from watts on the flood safe. This is going to get plugged into this uh, connection port here and what's going to happen is, is another connection port is for the water sensor. If the water sensor, let me show you what that looks like. Here is the water sensor. And this is the bottom of the water sensor. And this is uh, what the top looks like. It just, this just goes down on the, on underneath the water heater. And it's got little ridges in here. So, so when it sits, it'll, it'll allow for the water to go underneath making a circuit here, uh, similar to what that guy did with the, um, <laughs> with the smoke detector. This will make the circuit, it will, and this will plug into the valve, to the control valve, which is right here. This will, once, once this gets at, uh, activated with water, it's going to close this valve here, because it's gonna be opened under normal conditions, and it's gonna sh interrupt the, this signal here from the thermocouple and it's going to shut it off, uh, not allowing the natural gas valve to open. That is going to prevent further damage to the property if the water sensor senses that it has sensed water. So that I think this is what 
I think every home that has a, a, a tank type hot, uh, water heater should have this device, especially if your water heater is inside your dwelling or on your second level or in some area that if there was a failure that it would cause massive damage. Now, in, like I was telling you earlier in this video, the water heaters, when they were to fail, especially in the past, they would just kind of trickle out the bottom. You have a pool of water and it would be an inconvenience, a hassle, and you got to deal with it. Now, with the energy standards, apparently the energy standards have forced the uh, water heater manufacturers to reduce the wall thickness of the water heaters supposedly in an effort to get better efficiency and in doing so some water heaters when they're failing now they're failing at the seam when you when they take that metal and they they seam it to, they, they they roll it together and then there's a seam in there the seam on some water heaters is splitting creating a complete it's it's not an explosion it's just a massive failure so um, that is a horrible uh, water heater failure if someone was to go through that. If, by the way, if you have gone through that experience, comments below. Anybody that has experienced any type of water heater damage in their dwelling, in their house, please, comments below. We want to hear your stories or your horror stories or exactly what you uh, encountered. The only way that, you, uh, that I could see where you really would not need this type of a device is if your water heater was located outside of your dwelling. Actually, that is the safest way to go. I was actually even considering it myself. Taking this water heater when when I go to do the replacement, that's an exterior wall right there, putting it outside the wall. Um, I could do that. The problem is, is that it's a walkway, it's three feet, it's three feet wide, and the, the water heater is going to take up almost two feet of that. It, it's not, it, it, aesthetically it's not pretty, it's, it would be in the way, it would be an inconvenience, not to say the least, and because and it's a side of the house walkway, it's, it's just not really conducive. I'm better off spending 200 bucks and putting this watt stopper in uh, this uh, flood safe from watts right there rather than bringing it outside. But the safest thing that you can possibly do if you're in a position to, uh, uh, depending upon how your house is set up and things of this nature, is to actually have the water heater exterior to the dwelling and uh, and of course hopefully you've got weather i mean i live in socal so i don't have to worry about snow if you're in a snow uh climated environment you that's probably i don't know if, if that's even realistic uh to to do that now the, you probably have it in the basement uh if you're in a snow uh um uh, uh, climate area uh, where you live but uh, I don't I, you know in SoCal we don't have basements because of the earthquakes so uh, they, they're got to be in, in the house somewhere uh, on the slab level usually and in my case it's in the garage I guess that's a very common area for for us people in SoCal so uh, anyways that's the that's the whole backdrop I gave you tons of information about why I'm doing this and uh, a little bit about the the device that I want to install and now I want to go ahead and get right to it and actually do the install okay here's the unboxing of the watt stopper valve now when you look at the uh, packaging and you see the word SPR the R stands for right hand threads if it was SBL it would be left hand threads and I'll show you where that is over here on my hot water heater there's the gas valve the thermocouple is right there and you just use a wrench like this here to determine whether it's right or left hand threads and I'll show you that in just a minute but let me finish up with the unboxing so with the unboxing comes this set of instructions here comes the uh, the uh, the valve itself uh, that's going to uh, do everything and it's got all your connections there how you uh, plug everything in and it also has that thermocouple which I'm going to uh, need the thermocouple interruption I guess uh, 
because I have a standing pilot water heater. This is the water level sensing device, which of course you're going to need. Now they give you the transformer and it's got uh, Oops, it's got nice negative and positive signals there. You know what they don't, they don't give you the wire that goes, they, and they give you the connector and the screwdriver. They don't give you the wire. You need thermostat wire. Now, according to the instructions here, it says that if you use 18 gauge thermostat wire, you can go up to 75 feet. 20 gauge wire can go 50 feet. 22 gauge wire can go 35 feet. So in my particular case, my, I have power over here on my workbench. I got a few things here, but I do have a power strip. <clears throat> well, let's just see how well this thing does. <clears throat> if I install this, I have an extra outlet right there too. So I could either put it in here, go up like that, or uh, if I go here, it'll block that button there. I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe I'll just put it here and do it like that. In any regards, I have to run two wires, uh, a cable with, with two wires uh, coming up here and going over to there. So it's not even 35 feet. So I could actually use the smallest one. In my case, I could uh, go all the way down to um, 22 gauge. So I gotta, I gotta get some wire, and I gotta get it long enough to go from there to there. So I gotta figure that out. Um, all right. Oh, and then also this product here. This is the what they call the water dam. So uh, we can build a water dam. So here's the bottom of my water heater, and you can see it's just a, it looks like it's a piece of half inch plywood. That's what it looks like to me, uh, and it's been non painted. It's kind of in poor condition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put some red guard under here. Hopefully I can I can get under there and do that. Let's just see. Yeah. Yeah, it looks all right. It looks like I, I'm going to be able to, uh, to do that. Yeah, that's just the other leg on the other side. So uh, I'm going to take some time here and clean this up. And I'm making this into a project. So I'm going to go ahead and give it two coats of Red Guard, which will waterproof it. And then I'll paint it and then do everything nice and pretty. But before I get into all that, I want to show you uh, to determine whether it's right hand or left hand thread. So let's get into that right now. Here is the easiest way that I can describe right hand thread and left hand thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a simple nut and bolt. And if when I take this um, nut and I screw it on clockwise, you'll see that it is going into the threads of the bolt, okay? That is a right-handed thread. And the way that you remember it is like this. Righty-tighty, which is clockwise, lefty-loosey. You just have to make sure that you know what direction the bolt is in when you do it. If the bolt is going down like this, and you put the the nut on top and you screw it, you see that if you pretend that the top of this is like a clock, that would be uh, an example of righty tighty. So you're just going righty tighty. When it is upside down like this, when you want to go righty tighty, you actually um, you need to, to go in this way, which kind of gives you the perception that it is counterclockwise, when in reality, it, you're just looking at it upside down. So that is still a right-handed thread. It's just that your, your perception of the bolt has changed. So you want to look at it and pretend as if you're always looking at it either straight on or down. And it, does it turn clockwise? Well, then that's a right-handed thread. That's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. We can use the same principle now to determine what is going on with our thermocouple, which is right over here. Okay, when you're looking at the water heater, oh, by the way, I should mention, this particular water heater is a, a GE Profile self-cleaning. It's a 50-gallon water heater. There's your model and serial number right there. 
And I got to tell you, I uh, I don't know if GE still makes water heaters. There's the, the yellow uh, sticker for the energy guide. I don't know if they still make them, but I would absolutely buy another one of these. This thing's 15 years old, still kicking strong. Now, uh, if you look at my videos, you'll see that I have changed out the anode rod, which is the sacrificial rod of the water heater. Yeah, I did it in March of 2019, and uh, let's see, I should have done it. Uh, actually, wait a second, I'm sorry, I did it twice. I did it in 2015, I did it again in 2019. And then I actually, you know, wrote, wrote down what the uh, 45 inch anode rod, and there is the, uh, the information about the uh, SKU number, the internet number, and all that from the, uh, and it's an aluminum rod, and that's from the, uh, from the Home Depot. I forget how much that was, but whatever it is, anything to extend the life of this I'd like to do. Normally, I would also like to blow down my tank. My tank valve came plastic, and when, and when I tried to blow it, blow it down in the, in the past, this thing is falling apart. It's it's cheap, cheap, cheap quality. I, I would only want a brass valve moving forward with the next one. So I just wrote down there, this valve doesn't shut tight, don't blow down. And I did that. I, st I stopped doing any, any blowdowns in 2015. So that was four years ago. So um, I just, uh, on the new one, I, I want a, a brass valve and I'll I'll just do it a lot differently to make sure it's really nice. And I, of course, on the new one, I'd have a catch pan. I do. I would do this whole job differently, but I didn't install this. I'm just dealing with it as it is, and I'm just milking this puppy out, like I said. Okay. Now, when you're looking at the gas valve, you can see your thermostat here. I got it set to hot, and you've got your controls up here, and it's it's on right now, so the flame is on. There's the natural gas shutoff valve. Natural gas goes into this flexible line, comes into the gas valve. Underneath the gas valve, you're looking at three pipes or lines or whatever. This one is the pilot natural gas. This is the main line natural gas and this small copper one here is the thermocouple. Now we need to determine whether those th that thread pattern is right-handed thread or left-handed thread. Now you remember the terminology righty tidy lefty loosey. So I've got a wrench here and this particular wrench is a 3 8 inch uh, wrench. Okay, Let's see if I can show you that. If it will allow me to. All right, so it's a 3 8 inch wrench, and we're just going to take that. And if I'm correct, if I to loosen it, I just have to go to the left. And uh, try to zoom in for you right here. Doing this one-handed, and you can see that is loosening. So that when I turn it to the left, righty tighty lefty loosey, guess what? It's loosening up. So I tighten it back up and it's tightening up, meaning it's a right-handed thread. That is the same one that I purchased. That is the correct one. So I do have a right-handed thread thermocouple. So that's good. While we're here, let's go ahead and open this up and look inside the, the, uh, the chamber. So on this type of a water heater, you take this cover door, lift up slightly, you see it's got these little prongs here. Lift up like that just to pull that out. There's an interior door here. You want to lift up on that and on this one you kind of have to bring it down, turn it upside down, and then bring it out. Now we can actually look inside the burner chamber. I've got a flashlight here. I'm going to show you, and by the way, you should be doing this your own as homeowners at least annually. Now let me turn the flashlight on so you can get a good look inside here. So there is the um, pilot. And that's and when the main valve opens, you can see the main burner tray that all that all that will light off. Okay. As a matter of fact, I can turn this on. Uh, I have it set to hot, but what I can do is I can take it, uh, go a little bit more, and see if that will light off. 
hopefully it'll light off right in front of us. Okay, what, what, another thing that I'm doing is I'm inspecting inside here. I'm looking at the bottom of the tank. I'm looking for water leaks. I'm looking for rust leaks. I'm looking for anything that looks weird. I want to make sure that the, that the, the baffle section, uh, which is like a helix type product inside that main fluid discharge to slow the products of combustion down, hasn't rusted, broken down, and fallen onto my burner tray. The burner tray should be like, you see it now, free and clean clear, unobstructed, no problems. Uh, you can see, I can see the bottom here. There is absolutely no water leaks in this water heater at all, okay? And again, it's a 15-year-old water heater. So, I mean, this thing is, is considered ancient by some people's standards. So, we're just doing a full inspection here. Everything looks 100%. I have absolutely zero issue with this. So, uh, I was going to get the main burners to come on, but I, they're not coming on right now, so let's not worry about it. All right, now I do, let me go ahead and put this to vacation mode right there. And now I want to pull this out so I can put in the, um, the other device, the, uh, the, the device that we're connecting. Uh, actually, hold on, before I do that, all right, I found some thermostat wire in my box. It's not long enough. I have to get it longer. But when you have thermostat wire, this is how you read it. You see here, let me see if I can get you a zoom in on that. You read the, the cable sheathing and you'll see right there it says 20 AWG uh, type CL and gives you some more information there. And then then you've got the uh, thermostat wire. Now, it, it, this particular one came with, um, let's just see here, uh, one, two, three, four, six leads in total. But what I ended up doing is I ended up just using the white and the red. Now, what I did was is I connected the white to the um, negative and the red to the positive. That's kind of like an industry standard. You can see right there, negative for the white, positive for the red. Now, and then when you go over to the connector, let me show you what the instructions say. All right, so to, they give you the connector, but they, you have to figure out how to connect it on. So I've got my plug unplugged right now, so it's not plugged into the transformer, and I'm just trying to do this one-handed, but so the first thing you need to do is you need to determine how indeed this connector gets plugged in. Does it get plugged in this way or does it get plugged in this way? And then of course it goes, it gets plugged in this way here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and connect that in. Now uh, then there, there's four lines or four potential areas of connection terminations that you could connect onto and then this this is what they give you according to this on the little schematic on the instruction manual it tells you not to connect to those top two top two ports right there you want to connect to the plus and minus 12 volts and it's very simple plus gets connected to plus negative here gets connected to negative here so we know that on the transformer I connected the positive to the red the negative to the right positive right there to the red negative to the white. So my polarity, you have to have the correct polarity for this connection for your low voltage transformer. And I've got a meter here. We're going to go ahead and test that right now to verify that all is good. And I'll show you that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my 110 volts right there. I'm going to take my meter Actually, I just powered up the valve. That beeping is the valve right there, but that's okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and I'm going to um, go to voltage DC, which is this setting on my meter right there, voltage DC. And we're going to go ahead and see what we have for voltage uh, coming out of the uh, transformer. So negative goes on the top, positive goes on the bottom and the number is 15.72. So we know that we've got 15.72 coming out of here. 
Uh, now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, negative and positive leads, just connect them over here, and make sure that I've got it. And indeed, I do have it. And there it is right there. Hopefully, you can see that. Oh, wait a second. Okay, hold on. My connections are a little loose. 15.72 right there. All right, so we know that the low voltage is working. All right, so now that we know that we've got low voltage on here, I just want to see what this says. So I got it plugged in and just looking to see what it's doing here. All right, so the valve is currently closed, but it is beeping. I'm just going to hit silence. Something's clicking inside, but um, I don't think that's anything. All right, I don't have anything uh, hooked up. I don't even have the, the, uh, the thermocouple in here, so it's not going to work. Status is on, and the valve is in the closed position. But uh, what I want to do now is I want to test the uh, thermocouple to verify that that is going to work appropriately before I get into the actual installation of the valve. According to the instruction manual, the first thing that they want me to do is they want me to uh, turn off the gas, turn off the water supply, and to drain the water from, uh, from, the, from the water heater so that the cold water supply uh, pipe is free of water and stuff like that. So they, they want me to go ahead and start the installation. I actually don't want to start the installation until I confirm that the thermocouple device is going to work appropriately for me first. So that's where I'm going to start. So the first thing I want to do is I want to shut off the natural gas going to the water heater. I got the uh, water heater in vacation mode anyways. It's not going to light off. I lost the pilot because I shut that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen up my thermocouple threads. And I want to make sure that I'm not going to have any compatibility issues with the thermocouple. So I'm just going to bring that down and bring this over. I don't want to kink this line or anything. I want to be gentle with that. Uh, hopefully this is a 3 8 thread. Now, okay, now I got the, uh, the wrench for this which is uh, 7 16 So now I want to put this in. Actually, I guess what I could do is put this in first. There's your right hand threads. This is why this was critically important that you got the right one. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this on here. That's tight. Now, I got to be careful how I do this because I don't want anything to break. So I'm kind of tucking this in over here while I come up here. And with the larger wrench, which is 7 16 I'm going to see if I can't tighten that up. They appear to be tight. Everything's tight. Now, just as an experiment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to pilot and I want to turn the gas on. I want to see if I can actually light my pilot like this. Let me get a, uh, a flame, which I got right here. And I want to see if I can get this pilot going. All right, I have it plugged in to the transformer. I've got all the connections on the valve there. And then when I first turned it on, the uh, light was uh, red and it was blinking uh, no it wasn't blinking it was yeah it was just going it was beeping so i hit the silence button and the, then what i did was is i uh, took my screwdriver right here 
and I just put it inside the slot right here and turned it from closed to open. The light turned from red to green. I'll demonstrate this again so you can see it. And then, uh, and then the valve, you can see there, is now open 100%, but it also shows you open right there. So, so it's plugged in, all the connections are plugged in, and I now want to make sure that this water heater can light off. So I'm going to go ahead and try to light the pilot off again. And then I also have some water here, and there's the uh, um, water sensing device, so I can do a test with some water and verify that the valve is going to shut off. So I'm doing all this testing before I do the actual install. Here we go. All right, the natural gas is, uh, is opened over here. I'm going to go ahead and move this to a pilot, and I'm going to depress this while I light this off and show you this. There it is. Okay, so the difference now between my first testing is that now this is actually plugged in and the valve is actually powered up. That was the one thing I didn't do before. I was trying to see if this would work unpowered. So I'm just holding this in for a few seconds. Okay, I just released it. My hand is off of the, uh, the valve. We are holding the pilot. Let's go ahead and turn this uh, from pilot to on. All right, let me show you that. All right, so when I first lit this thing off, I had this in pilot mode so I could depress this. Now that the pilot is actually lit, I'm going to turn this from pilot to on. I'm going to take this from vacation mode and I'm going to light that up all the way to high. To hot. Let's see if this thing lights off. I don't, I don't know how cold this tank is. If it'll actually light off, then you'll see the full burners on it, which would not be a terrible thing at all. Actually, I'd like you to do that. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to light right off, though. Usually there's a few second delay, but usually the delay is not too, too, too long. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to run some water in the sink. There it goes. Let me shut the water off. Okay, I actually turned on the uh, water to the tub to make it go faster. This is what the uh, flame looks like. Just wanted to show you uh, my flame pattern while we got it uh, out and everything. Okay, now it's time to do the actual test and simulate the water heater leaking. That would be just taking some water, which is right here, you see I got some water right here. It's nice and wet and I'm just going to put it on top of this sensor and let's see what happens. Let's see if this thing actually... Oh, there it goes. Look at that. Uh, the flame shut off. The valve indicates closed here. It's beeping. And the valve shut off there. <laughs> Yeehaw! That's exactly the response I was looking for. All right. Now, let me uh, now simulate when you want to go and reset everything. All right. So let me grab a uh, towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off so that there's absolutely no moisture here on this sensor at all. I'm going to hit the silence button so the beeping has stopped. Now I'm going to take my screwdriver, put it in here. All right, the whole device is turning. Let me cradle the uh, camera. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my screwdriver, put it in the slot here, and turn this from closed to open. You can see the light changed from red to green and now that port is fully open uh, on the inside. So that's good. All that's fine. Now let's see if we can get the pilot lit off again. Okay, just playing around with this. I'm gonna, I haven't even touched this or this. All I'm gonna do is just, for the hell of it, just take my lighter and see if it'll light off. 
will not light off. Completely lost that. So what I need to do is I need to, I'll leave this alone. I'm going to take this, put this to pilot, and I'm going to depress this button while I light that off. Because I need one hand for that and one hand for that, i got to cradle the camera again. Okay, I'm going to depress the top. See if this will light off. We got lit right off. And let's see how many one. I'll give it 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look at that. I let go. And now I'm going to take my knob and change it from pilot to on. Pilot here and go to on. Oh, there we go. We lit right off. You can hear that puppy light right off. Okay, so we're good with everything. We can test it one more time just for fun since we're right here. Here we go. We're going to test it one more time. And leave this here. There's your sensor. Hopefully you'll be able to hear everything. Yeah, see that? Flame shut off and sensor beeping. Valve is closed. Valve is closed. This thing works fine. We can go ahead and do an install on this. And this device is going to do exactly what I want it to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and silence it and pull the uh, water away. We don't need that. Dry the sensor, simulating that the water has the leak has been fixed or whatever. Then we're going to go ahead and, and reset this. This is under spring tension, so when you turn this, you can feel a spring uh, that you're going against. And light turned to green, on right there. And let's go. Okay, let's go ahead and light off the water heater. First thing we do is we turn that to pilot so that you can depress the knob. And I'm going to have to uh, cradle it again and uh, light this off. But you've already seen this process, so I'll just do this without you. Okay, we've lit off our water heater. We have this plugged in. I'm going to simulate what happens if I lose power to the device. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Power has been removed. The light is no longer on here, but the flame is still on. So that seems to be working okay. Let's go ahead and disconnect this line here, which is going to that thermocouple. If I can reach the tab, hold on. Okay, this is the line here that I want to pull out. There's a little depression there I got to hit. I might have to use a small uh, screwdriver to do it. Let's try this. Okay. Oh, when I pulled that out, the flame shut off. The flame is no longer out. So even though I have disconnected the, the power supply, the flame did not actually cut out until I disconnected this one line right here, which is from the thermocouple. So even so that so that's a that's an interesting thing, okay? So even this unit can run without power, but this connection has to be plugged in. Now we'll verify that right now. We'll plug that in and we'll try to light off the uh, pilot. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this in. It snaps in positively, which is nice. Now let's go ahead and light off the pilot flame. First thing I got to do is come up here, change this from on the pilot. Make sure the plunger can depress. Has to be in a, just the right position to do so. Okay, there we go. And let's go ahead, light this off. There it is. And let me give it a few seconds to hold. Okay, I've released it. It is holding. 
Let's go ahead and turn it to on. Oh, you can hear it kick right on. It's got a really strong sound to it. So, so you don't need power. It's disconnected right now. There's the power supply right there. It's not connected. You don't need power for the water heater to run. The only thing that's not going to work is this here. Now, just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and wet the sensor down and see if anything does indeed happen. Let's just try that just for fun. Yeah, see, it does nothing. Without power, this, this is not going to run. You'll still have a water heater, but you lose the safety of this if you lose power to the, to the outlet for some reason. Um, so good to know exactly how it works, what it's doing, stuff like that. Now that we've done our full testing, we can go ahead and do an install. I got the uh, control valve up there. I have everything disconnected from the control valve except for the thermocouple. And the pilot is still lit off. So the hot water, the water heater is still in normal service until I get this uh, done. Right now I'm making up a material list. Let me go over that with you in one second. Now, we're at the, where do I want to install this valve? The valve has a three-quarter inch threaded connection here and here on both sides. You can see that on my uh, tank, well, just in case you don't know it, the blue is the cold, but there's also, if you move this dust away, you can see that it's cold. I know that's cold water inlet. And this is the hot water inlet, also indicated by the red here. And on my tank, uh, of course, I've got a, a thermal expansion, air expansion tank right here, uh, also a Watts device. Interestingly enough, both from the same manufacturer, both Watts products. Um, and this is to take care of thermal expansion. If you don't know about thermal expansion, please watch my videos on, on uh, this pressure to the house. I, I go through uh, I've, uh, many videos about uh, uh, pressure, water, thermal expansion, uh, everything. But anyways, uh, here's the cold water coming in. I have a shut, water, uh, a shut off valve here for the cold water inlet. On my system, I've also installed a shut off valve on the hot water going out, so I can completely can isolate this uh, water heater. Okay, what do? Where do I want to install this? I, uh, uh, I want to install it like this. This is how I want to install it. I don't. I don't. I want to install it so that I can see from down below here when I'm standing the open and close position and the, and the status indicator. If I do it like this, I can't, if I, if I install it like this, I can't see anything. That's no good to me. I want to install it like this, uh, slightly down, maybe just flat straight, maybe at an angle, somewhere in this area right here so I can see, what, see what's going on. So this connection onto here, that's a slam dunk. All I need is uh, Teflon tape. This connection, that is a female. That is a female, so I need to get an adapter. So I wrote it up to get a three-quarter inch to three-quarter inch male adapter, brass. I'll get that at the Home Depot. That will take care of this connection. But once I do that and I put this in like this, then this flexible line here is going to be brought over more here, putting a big kink here and here. So it might not be long enough. I'm going to see if they have different lengths at the Home Depot, and I will get uh, various lengths and uh, to to get the most optimal size for that connection. If that's not possible, I'll change this bottom connection here so it comes up at a 90 going out. So it just has to make a loop instead of coming up and all this. So so I. Uh, that's a three-quarter inch connection. Everything is three-quarters of an inch. So I got my, my shopping list. I am going to head out to the Home Depot. All right, here's my shopping list. I'm going to get 20 feet of 20 AWG, which stands for American Wire Gauge Thermostat Wire. That's going to take care of me plugging in the transformer right there and then coming up the wall and then uh, plugging into the uh, control valve, which is going to be located way up there. Uh, 20 feet is more than enough. 
Uh, I also want to get some red guard and uh, some uh, rollers. I have one roller here, but I might want to get a couple more and get a paint tray. Uh, what I'm going to do, and this is, of course, you don't have to do this, but whatever. I'm a crazy individual, and this is how I roll. I'm going to take some sandpaper. I'm going to sand this thing down here sand it up really good, clean it up really nice. Then I'm going to put two coats of red guard down. Then I've got some extra paint here that I did for an exterior painting project. Plenty of paint. And, I'll, and because this color here is kind of like a wood color, um, I'll put one or two coats of this coat there just so that you know, nobody will ever see it. Uh, and then that'll be waterproofed, painted, everything's good to go. So when I go to put the sensor down, um, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about nothing whatever um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and also I got to get the uh, longer uh, three-quarter inch flex copper pipes I'll snap a picture of this with my smartphone so I have a shopping list head to the depot get these products I'm back from the Home Depot I got some thermostat wire I just got some 18 2 by 50 feet this was 11 bucks uh, I got some roller pads so I could do my uh, some painting so some four inch roller pads I also got a hex nipple here, and this is a three-quarter inch. This here is what it looks like, male to male, three-quarters of an inch. And I got this uh, street elbow here, uh, three-quarter inch. This is what it looks like. So it's female on one side, male on the other. And uh, I already had some Teflon tape. I got an extra three-quarter inch uh, nipple, uh, three-quarter inch, which is exactly like that one in case I need it. I got some uh, two-inch uh, chip brushes. And I also got um, uh, some copper flexible uh, three-quarter inch uh, lines. Uh, one of them here is uh, 18 inches, uh, which is probably the size that's there now. And then the other one is three-quarter to three-quarter. And the other one is 24 inches, if, in case I need it, three-quarter to three-quarter. Uh, one thing when you go to the depot and you buy these, you got to look inside and make sure that the, um, that the black... Um, rubber washer is there. first one I picked up off the shelf, the rubber washer was missing. So you always want to double check that while you're at the store. Uh, the reason why I, I got this one, I'll show you. So my intention is to install this right here, have it come out like this, and then, and then I could uh, reuse this pipe here. And instead of going down like that and be under stress like this, it'll come out this way and then come up and around. Uh, and then hopefully, uh, this, if this one's not long enough, like I said, I got even a 24, an 18 and a 24. I'm assuming that's an 18, but I got extras just in case. Uh, this thing here, this uh, street elbow, hits this uh, draft hood when it uh, when I try to when I'm going to try to swing it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to disconnect uh, this draft hood. It's just a couple of quarter inch. Uh, uh, bolts up there so I can use this nut driver right here and uh, get that get this over move it over clean those threads off uh, put some Teflon tape on there put this on and then uh, and then go to town so I got to uh, shut this off get the pressure out of it so the first thing so the first thing I did was I put the uh, heater all right first thing I did was I moved the heater knob to vacation so I don't have to worry about the uh, the water heater lighting off on me. Next thing I want to do is I want to get the water off in the water heater so I gotta shut off the cold water inlet. First thing I'm gonna do is shut the cold water inlet off. shut this tank off. I have a valve, ball valve right here. Off, off, off. Now I'm going to go open up the a hot water faucet inside, drain the water out or relieve that pressure. Okay, here's hot water. Open that up, get that pressure down to zero. And we're pretty much at static right there. I'm going to shut that off now and just let that go. All right, now that the water is off, I'm gonna shut this off here so I don't have to worry about water coming back on me. I got a bucket in case I wanna capture any water and a rag just in case there's anything there. First thing I wanna do is I wanna break 
Uh, I'll break this connection here. That way I, I can capture any water real, real easy. And I'll do the, uh, the double wrench technique. Let me uh, let's see here. I got another wrench here that I want. The uh, double wrench technique is when you take one wrench and you hold one section of the uh, connection with the wrench and you adjust it so you've got a nice good grip on it. Then you take the other wrench and you break the connection. Once it's loose, you don't need to double wrench it. Let's see if any water comes out. Alright, just a little bit of water there. Actually, this line here should drain out, which is fine. Alright, got it down to a drip. And then I got this to catch the rest, the remainder of that. So I'll put that there. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out the bottom pipe. Okay. Now that pipe is free.